8. The Governorin In January 1915, just nine days after famed Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton's endurance ship was crushed by ice and sank to its watery grave in the Weddell Sea, another disaster happened. A Norwegian whaling factory ship called the Governorin met with disaster 800 miles away, near the shore of Enterprise Island in Foyne Harbor. The whaling season had just ended, and the Governorin's crew threw a party to celebrate their upcoming voyage home. But things got a little too rowdy between the drinking and the dancing, and someone knocked an oil lamp off a table, causing the ship to catch fire. It was one of the worst possible things that could happen to a vessel holding a large amount of whale oil, which further fueled the blaze. The captain and crew were left with no choice but to abandon ship. Luckily, all 85 men escaped without injury. They stood by and watched helplessly as the governor and became fully engulfed in flames and were soon rescued by another whaling ship. What's left of the wreck still sits in Foyne Harbor today. It serves as a haunting reminder of how one careless mistake amounted to a huge economic loss for the whaling industry and the workers who relied on the ship's bounty for money to support their families. 7. The Octavius According to legend, a three-masted schooner called the Octavius left England for a one-year round trip to China in 1761 and never returned. Not a single trace of the ship was seen until 1775, when the crew of a whaling vessel called the Herald spotted the weathered Octavius floating aimlessly off the Greenland coast with tattered sails. Discovered roughly 250 miles above the Arctic Circle, it was extremely far from its last known route. Five members of the Herald's crew boarded the long-missing ship and found the entire 28-man crew dead, frozen, and perfectly preserved, showing no signs of decomposition despite having disappeared 14 years earlier. The captain's lifeless body was seated at his desk, with his pen still in hand and his logbook open in front of him. Nearby, the remains of a woman and child, the captain's wife and kid, were found under a blanket. Shocked by what they saw, the crew members from the Herald hurriedly grabbed the logbook and went back to their ship. The logbook's last entry was dated to November 11, 1762, nearly 13 years earlier. Records show that the Octavius reached the Orient as planned. After noticing that the ocean's waters were unseasonably warm, the captain ordered the crew to attempt a shortcut by sailing north through the Arctic. Unfortunately, it was a decision that proved to be catastrophic. The Octavius was never seen again after the Herald's crew found it, and its logbook has also vanished, leading several modern historians to believe that the ship never existed and is entirely mythical. But researchers have also failed to trace any possible origins it could have as a fictional story, and for that reason, they haven't proven that the ill-fated vessel wasn't real. 6. The Sea Wing Built during the 1880s in Wisconsin, the 135-foot-long Sea Wing has a steamship that moved lumber and commodities up and down the Mississippi River and moonlighted as an excursion vessel. On the morning of July 13, 1890, the Sea Wing left Wisconsin for a day trip to Minnesota, located north of St. Paula along Lake Pepin. After stopping in Red Wing, Minnesota, the steamer continued onward to Lake City with an excursion barge in tow. They spent the day at a carnival until around 7 o'clock p.m., when a sudden rain squall disrupted the fun and the captain called the passengers back on board. By then, the weather conditions were increasing to an ominous level. The sky was filled with dark, threatening clouds, and even some locals grew concerned and urged passengers to stay on dry land. Nevertheless, around 215 people boarded the ship and its attached barge. The Sea Wing encountered a violent storm and a large wave flipped the vessel, causing it to detach from the barge it was towing and capsize. All the passengers, who had crammed into the ship's cabin for shelter from the storm, were now upside down in the water. 98 passengers drowned, including 50 of the 57 women aboard, while 25 survivors clung to debris, climbed onto the bottom of the overturned boat, and attempted to swim for shore. The passengers in the barge were unharmed, most of the victims were from Red Wing, leaving the community shattered with grief. An investigation found that the captain was only licensed to carry 12 passengers, and he wasn't qualified to tow barges. The number of passengers also exceeded the Sea Wing's capacity. The life vests were in terrible condition, and the ship was understaffed. 
Weathern lost his license but was never criminally charged. 5. Discovery Mutiny In one of the earliest attempts to discover a northwest sea route to Asia through the Arctic, English explorer Henry Hudson set out on his fourth major expedition in 1610 in his newly built ship, the Discovery. He crossed the Atlantic from Europe, then sailed northward between modern-day Greenland and the Canadian province of Labrador. Believing he'd stayed too far south during his previous voyages, Hudson ventured further north than it ever had before. When the ship reached the Hudson Strait, the crew became hopeful that they'd found the entry point to the Northwest Passage. They continued, but their journey came to a screeching halt several months later when the Discovery became trapped in ice. The men spent the winter trapped. When the ice finally broke the following spring, Hudson was determined to continue sailing northward. But his crew was tired, sick, and hungry, and they wanted to end the mission. Fed up with their suffering, they staged a mutiny and put Hudson, his teenage son, and seven others in a separate boat and set them adrift in the freezing North Atlantic. The small group rowed desperately to try catching up with the Discovery, but the mutineers raised extra sails to increase their speed and get away faster, proving that it's not always the ship that doesn't make it out of an unforgiving environment, but the people who arrived with it. Nobody ever saw Hudson or his companions again after that, but it's probably safe to assume that they died in a painful battle against the elements. The mutineers fared only slightly better, with five of the 13 men dying during the vessel's return voyage to England. How do you think Hudson and his companions died? Tell us in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. 4. The Breadalbane Sir John Franklin was one of numerous European 19th century explorers who competed to find a polar sea route linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, known as the Northwest Passage. He set sail in 1845 with a 129-person crew and two ships, the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. Two months into the voyage, the vessels became icebound in Canada's Victoria Strait. The crews remained on the ships for a year before they left on foot, despite having several years' worth of food on board. Over 100 search missions ensued over the following decade. In 1853, the British Royal Navy sent a Scottish-built merchant bark, the Breadalbane, to the high Arctic to resupply an expedition that was out searching for Franklin and his crew. The three-masted ship made it all the way to Resolute Bay, roughly 500 miles above the Arctic Circle, without any major problems. Things took a horrifying turn one night, when slow-moving ice surrounded the Breadalbane and pierced its starboard bow. The crew gathered as much equipment and belongings as they could carry and rushed off the ship as it became choked by the encroaching ice. It took less than 15 minutes for the vessel to disappear completely beneath the surface. Luckily, all 21 crew members survived and were soon rescued. The Breadalbane wreck was rediscovered in the Barrow Strait in 1980 at a depth of 330 feet. It's famous for being one of the world's northernmost shipwrecks and one of the most intact wooden saltwater wrecks ever found. Thanks to the dark and frigid conditions of the Arctic Sea, the sunken ship has sustained minimal damage over the years and is deteriorating much more slowly than a typical wooden vessel. Several artifacts were brought to the surface for preservation and display, including the steering wheel. 3. USS Jeanette in a bid to become the first humans in recorded history to reach the North Pole, the 33-man crew of the naval exploration vessel USS Jeanette sailed out of San Francisco on July 8, 1879, with plans to reach their destination by navigating through the Bering Strait. The ship sent its last communication about six weeks later and then became trapped in ice. For nearly two years, the Jeanette drifted uncontrollably in the Siberian Sea, going wherever the ice took it. In mid-June of 1881, the pressure of the floating ice began to crush the 142-foot-long ship, and it became clear that the Jeanette was going to sink. Left with no other choice, the crew unloaded some supplies and began trekking across the floating ice on foot from 497 miles above the Arctic Circle. With three small boats in tow, they trudged through snow and slush that was sometimes waist-deep and encountered life-threatening brutal weather while hoping to eventually reach land. 21 crew members died during the journey, including the Jeanette's captain, George Washington DeLong. 
At least one man starved to death, and seven others perished when their boat capsized and sank during an attempt to sail to the Siberian mainland. Parts of the Jinnet wreck were seen on an ice floe in 1884, but no trace of the ship was ever seen again after that. In 2015, Russian adventurer and TV personality Andrei Koroshev announced plans to locate and recover the sunken vessel. But finding it apparently proved to be more difficult than he thought it would be, and the Jeanette remains missing to this day. 2. Carol A. Deering Built in 1918, the American-built Carol A. Deering was a five-masted cargo schooner that ferried coal and other goods between South America, the US, and the Caribbean. It operated for just a few years, before it ran into trouble off the North Carolina coast in 1921, while on its way back to Norfolk, Virginia from delivering a load of coal to Rio de Janeiro. While sailing past the Cape Lookout lightship, a crew member used a megaphone to tell the lookout's keeper that the Carol A. Deering had lost both of its anchors in a storm. He asked the keeper to pass the word on to the ship's owner, and that was the last anyone ever heard or saw of the vessel or its crew. Three days later, a surf man discovered the Carol A. Deering off Cape Hatteras, where it had run aground. The area had been known as a common shipwreck site for centuries, earning it the nickname the Graveyard of the Atlantic. Due to bad weather, rescue ships were unable to reach the stranded vessel for several days. Deering's crew, logbook, and lifeboats were all missing, along with the crew members' personal belongings. The ship's rudder was disengaged from its stock, and the steering wheel was shattered. It was evident that the crew had abandoned the ship in the middle of preparing for the next day's meal, indicating that something went majorly wrong. The Coast Guard tried but failed to salvage the Carol A. Deering. They declared the ship a navigational hazard and blew it up with dynamite. Nobody knows exactly what happened, but theories abound. Some believe that perhaps pirates or communists kidnapped the ship's crew. Others blamed bad weather, but will probably never know for sure. 1. SS Fort Mercer and SS Pendleton Disaster struck not once but twice on February 8, 1952, when two World War II-era tankers, the SS Pendleton and the SS Fort Mercer, became caught in the throes of a brutal nor'easter off the Massachusetts coast. The Fort Mercer cracked and broke in two about 30 miles from shore, with nine officers and crew members in the bow section and 34 others in the stern. Captain Frederick Peintzel sent out a panicked mayday call as the broken ship continued to take a beating from nearly 70-foot tall waves. The US Coast Guard rushed to the scene as fast as they could and managed to rescue all but five crew members. About 20 miles away near Cape Cod, the Pendleton also snapped in two during the tail end of its journey from New Orleans to Boston. By then, the Coast Guard was already aware that the Fort Mercer was in distress and they now had two broken ships that they had to try rescuing sailors from in the raging, violent storm. They managed to save all but nine of the Pendleton's crew members, including several who were trapped in the ship's bow and impossible to get to. The ship's cook also died after selflessly helping other men off the vessel. He jumped into the water as a strong gale forced the Pendleton into a sandbar and was fatally struck by his own ship when it hit a wave. He died instantly. The harrowing efforts to save the men on both ships went down in history as one of the Coast Guard's most daring rescues of all time. The Pendleton stern remains underwater to this day, and the bow section was ultimately scrapped. Even after being ripped in half, the Fort Mercer remained afloat. It was towed to Newport, Rhode Island, where it was fitted with a new bow. In an alarming example of history repeating itself, the ship broke in half again in 1964 and was once again rebuilt. It was finally scrapped in 1983. Thanks for watching. What did you think of these ships that didn't make it out? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.